Hi everybody. Welcome to week two of your courses at GRCC. I'm Katie Vandermeer and I'm making this video to kind of update you on what's going on this week. This year I thought I'd try something new and make one video a week for all of my courses. This is generic. No matter what course you're in, watch it. And then you'll want to check your announcements page in Blackboard for specific information on your course and we'll take a look at that today. So first of all, mo many of you know that I was in the hospital last week and I'm doing much better today. I, I was there a couple days, uh, recovered well and I think fairly quickly although I'm still taking it a little slow just to make sure everything is perfect and I'm looking forward to actually meeting my students this week and being a little bit more involved in Blackboard uh, with our online courses and things like that. So my department, the CIS department, I'll show you my little flowers. They're so cute in this little fish bowl. They said they miss me so just for documentation they really did miss me. It says so right here. We miss you. Come back. So I'm coming back this week and I'm super excited. Um, I'll look at, I'll show you my schedule later this in this video and uh, I'll try to keep it short so that you can get on with your coursework. So to begin, I'm going to go real quick through the eight classes I'm teaching. A lot of you are taking multiple courses. Just real quick, quick on what's going on. Quick course updates. For my CCNA classes, your Cisco courses, we're moving into week one of unit one, or week two, unit one. So you're going to be going into Packet Tracer in both courses, doing things related to routers and networking. So Unit 1's open and ready for you, ready to go. Quick update for both of those courses. I need to post weeks 2 and 3, and I'll do that by the end of this week. I'll get a little bit more ahead on that course and get some more material out there for you. Right now, only week 1 is posted, but that's good. Uh, our Windows Server courses, we have Windows Server 1 and Windows Server 2. Both of these courses were beginning lessons one and two today. At this point of the recording, one o'clock in the afternoon, they're not posted yet. I will have those when I'm done with this. I'm going to eat some lunch and then I'm going to post those real quick. Not real quick. I'm going to take my time so that they're really good. But I'll post an announcement uh, later today and they'll be posted by the end of the day so you can get moving on lesson one and two for both CIS 234 and 235. Um, again, check your calendar of due dates to see what's going on, but then when you check into your assignment tabs for these two courses, you'll see they're not there quite yet. They'll be there, though. Um, and then the week after, probably uh, next week, we're going to start um, doing our server installs for this course, or these two courses. Um, 233 Network Plus, we're going to do Chapter 1 both online and face-to-face. -face. There's some really good videos in the, the unit um, assignment that you're going to follow. Uh, one unit, one chapter, it's posted and ready for you to, to have at it. 132, uh, Linux. We are going to do our operating system installation on Wednesday, September 7th when we meet in class, so I look forward to that. Uh, make sure you come to class so you can do the install and so that I can meet you because I missed y'all last week and um, sit in the seat that you want to sit in for the rest of the semester because we're going to put our operating systems on our VM workstations. So I'll see you guys in the afternoon. Friday morning, this Friday, I go to work early on Fridays, you guys, 6.30 a.m. I have a meeting. After that, I'm going to have a, an office hour if anyone wants to come see me. And then I have a class, programming, which is completely different than networking, but I enjoy it. It gives me a nice break over uh, looking at IP addresses and um, cabling and packet tracing and all of those things that we do in Active Directory, all those things we do in networking and allows me to code with um, my programming students. So we're going to start with Unit 1 
uh, chapter one in that class. Make sure you attend that face-to-face -face course because this is our first big assignments that we're going to do. Um, it'll be a kind of, it's not too big, but I want to meet you, so come to class this week. Um, here's my weekly schedule. If you need to stop in and see me sometime, um, or you want to, I just wanted to let you know what the rest of the week looks like. It's a short week because of our Labor Day holiday yesterday. It's already Tuesday. My kids are back to school. I have my days free to, I don't know, work now without um, them underfoot, so that's super exciting. Um, Wednesdays, as always, I'm on campus from 9.30 until 4 o'clock, a little bit before, a little bit after. I have CIS 233 and CIS 132. Um, if you're in my online courses and you want to stop in and see me, uh, the classrooms are listed here. We do, you know, as long as we're not lecturing, um, you're welcome to come in and I'll help you with whatever it is you that you need help with. Um, on Thursday, I'm going to be on campus at noon. So, uh, and then I'll be there, I'll be on campus from about noon to 3. I have a meeting at 1.30, but from 12 to 1.30, if you um, are on campus or if you want to give me a call at my office phone or my cell phone, I should um, be available for you. Uh, I'll be on campus then. My office is in 212 of the ATC, and um, on Thursday and Friday, I have an office hour in the morning. That's probably where I'll be. So I already mentioned Friday. I have an office hour this week on Friday as well. That's still left open, 8.30 to 9.30 if you um, need to meet with me if you have any questions. So that's what my schedule looks like. And then we have our big faculty picnic. Sorry, guys, you're not invited, but... It should be fun. Hopefully, it doesn't rain this Saturday. We have a um, the faculty association, which is our um, our labor representation group. We hold the picnic every year, and it's just really fun. We do collect money for student scholarships this year. Um, we, in the past, we've collected money for our student food bank. Did you know we have a food bank? Uh, we do. A pantry. Um, if you are a student in need of some food and some assistance, go to Student Life because we have a pantry and you can go once a month and um, get some help with that. Um, that's run out of the Student Life's office. But anyway, at our faculty picnic, we always have donated to the pantry in the past, and this year we're donating to a new Centennial Scholarship that the Faculty Association created to help you guys with student fees. So um, scholarship information, we'll talk about that in another video, but it's kind of nice. We love our students. We want them to keep coming to college. Not forever, not a career educator uh, education, but well, yes and no. You know, you need to go on and get a job because I think that's why you're here. Speaking of jobs, I was thinking about this past summer and the students who got certified. Um, this will be off the top of my head. Uh, so maybe I won't do it. I know Chris Sayer, who's in um, our 234 class, I think. I have a lot of classes and a lot of students. But Chris Chris got his A-plus certification this year. So congratulations, or this summer, congratulations to Chris. Um, some of our former students, like Brian Hagen, maybe some of you know him from the um, tutor um, tutoring, he, he's a tutor in the open lab and works in the open lab, or did work in the open lab um, last year. He got his A-plus certification also this year, um, I'm sorry, this summer, so if you see him around, congratulate him. You might not see him around, though, because good news, he got hired in our IT department here at the college, so congrats to Brian if you see him. He's such a nice guy and got an A-plus certification. Um, Carla Baker is another former student. She's moved down to Florida to explore some job opportunities down there. She got her A+. And Leo, 
he is in our Leo, I cannot pronounce your last name with the T. Um, congratulations for your, you got a couple certifications and I think your most recent was your Security Plus. So you're doing our CCNA track, I believe, and I'm very proud of you. You're such a smart guy. And um, let us know when you get more, you get your CCNA because that's probably the next ones you're working on. John Welch, uh, he got a Network Plus certification, no, A Plus certification as well this past summer. And I think he's moved on to a college up north, maybe Michigan Tech. So if I'm missing anybody, you guys let us know uh, so that we can get it on our big screen that's in the hall. If, if you're walking in the ATC, you see it. Um, we have a list of the students who got certified. So uh, let us know if you're working on your certifications. But I found this article and it's it's recent, it's a summer, five IT certifications that'll launch your tech career. Number one, bam, CCNA. Gotta have that. We have at the college our four, actually five, because we do the CCNA security. So we are, do our four CCNA routing and switching classes. And if you're in the network curriculum or if you're in the, um, um, the information security curriculum, then you're going to take those courses. But this certification, if you have your CCNA, you're guaranteed, you're going to, you're guaranteed a job basically, you know, as long as you're not a complete idiot and other aspects like no soft skills or anything like that. But um, that's the number one certification that our our entry level um, IT techs should really get. It's going to help you tremendously, um, especially with a two-year associate degree. So two-year associate degree, CCNA, you're, you're going to be highly employable. Um, a plus, we just were talking about all those people who got their A plus certified certification this summer. And that's another cert. Network plus, we teach that as well. It's another certification in the field of networking. SIS information security professional degree. I think that's a CompTIA. I think that I see ISC2 um, certification. Yeah, it's not a come to you cert. Um, certified Information System Security Professional Degree. So a little different than the Security Plus, but along the same lines, it's um, more it must it's probably more recognizable than the the Security Plus that is from CompTIA. I'm not I'm not sure, and don't take my word on that because I'm not our security expert. That is Professor Rosema. Um, but security is a hot market, man. You got to know how to keep your network and the networks that you work on secure. <clears throat> secure. So you got that down. Um, that's like another guaranteed job place for you. And then um, number five, Microsoft. That used to be number one. You know, you need your Microsoft certifications. MCSE is your um, Microsoft Certified Systems Engineer. Um, that The kind of... Uh, entry level um, Microsoft Cert for for server administration is the MCSA, and that's a great one to get as well. Um, MCSA courses; those are the the ones over here, the 234 and 235 classes that you might be taking. So, kind of a cool, um, you know, article on what you might want to do to launch your um, opportunities in the job market. Personally, uh, I would do them all, <laughs> depending on what, if you don't know what you're going to do, um, get your degree because that never goes away. Certifications expire, your degrees don't. So get your degree and um, it, most certifications last three years. If you are looking in the next three years, then go get certified now, especially when you know that knowledge. And the other tip I'll give you on that is keep track of when certifications end, like when the when one is being retired and a new one is coming out so that you don't study everything that is going to be retired. You want to study new material. 
So B in the N. Okay, one other thing. I, I had a couple uh, sites that I was following earlier, and I thought, oh, here's something kind of interesting. Um, tendi, uh, trending tech news. So let's talk about mobile phones real quick. Um, I, are you thinking, what is the purpose of the vid this video? There is no purpose. It's just, you know, what's going on this week in, in your education world and my um, educational world and in the tech world. So let's talk about cell phones. Why not? Uh, iPhone 7. And what about this Samsung Note 7? Kind of interesting. So the Galaxy Note 7, they've recalled all of them. No more. Live, unless you've been living under a rock for the past week, you've no doubt heard about Samsung's decision to recall millions of Galaxy Note 7 smartphones since it launched August 19th, my mom's birthday. So a few weeks ago, Hey, here's your great fancy new phone. Sorry, your battery might, you know, start on fire. So we're going to recall them all. True story. Um, and we have a very uh, serious rule at our house where we unplug our phones are, that are not being charged from the um, outlet. We were eating dinner one night. Um, last semester I live on semester so sometime in the the winter months and my husband gets up and he's like what is that smell I smell something I smell something it was something burning and we're looking in the basement we're looking all over it wasn't my cooking I'm a good cook but we're looking all over and then in the kitchen the plug from our apple products like this and we they're, they're probably knockoffs we buy but it was on fire people it was on fire it was crazy so we don't leave anything plugged in anymore unless it's being charged when we're done charging we unplug it because these fires things they do happen i saw it in my own house um but i i don't know what has I'm sure with these Galaxy Notes, it was a very small um, percentage of of problems, but any percentage you need to do a, a recall, and that's just a massive recall for Samsung. Um, will it hurt them? I don't know. I'm not a market analyst, but it's kind of an interesting story. And along the same lines is they're taking back all of these smartphones Apple is doing a release, I think, tomorrow. Not a release, a a introduction. Hey, look at what our new iPhone 7 is going to be like. So they're going to do a media event tomorrow and re release some of the information on that. Personally, I'm an iPhone user. Do I care about iPhone 7? No, I don't. Because my 6 Plus is just fine and perfect and big enough. Um, the size isn't going to change. They're going to have some more colors with the iPhone 7. Uh, one thing they're going to talk about, and it'll be interesting to see what happens tomorrow on Wednesday the 7th, um, getting rid of the audio, audio jack. That's kind of a, a thing that they're laughing about in the industry is they want to go to these um, ear ear jet earbuds or um, lightning lightning earbuds you know it'll work on bluetooth so um getting rid of the audio jack is a huge paradigm shift for what all of our devices um, are using now and have since kind of the beginning of time of of, of these type of devices so we'll see how that that works um so they'll have some new colors. The, it, it'll have a couple more options from what I read, but nothing really major with the iPhone 7. So that's what I thought was interesting today, trending along along your um, phone news. There's other things too, you know. Um, but my point of telling you all this is to make sure that you have some of these, you know, articles that you follow, that you read, that you know what's going on. New, what's new this week? 
there's something new every darn day, it seems like. And then um, finally, just a little motivational quote, bam, for this week. Um, believe in yourself, even if you don't pretend that you do, and at some point you will. And I posted on my Facebook page something earlier this week. It was a job posting for a Cisco, a network engineer, which is kind of a lofty goal, but I said, fake it till you make it. And what I mean by that is just go for it. You know, if you don't think you're qualified, then that's not going to, you know, you know think that you're qualified. Tell yourself. I'm qualified. Even if you don't make, don't have all of the things that are listed on this job application or this or this job posting, fill it out anyway. If if it's something that you're interested in, fake it till you make it. You know, be confident in what you know, and and stand up for your education and the things you've learned. So, kind of, you know, I, I was thinking about that this week and. Um, I think it's helpful to, you know, set you off in a good spot this um, this week to uh, in this really the beginning of the semester as we're getting into our textbooks and getting into the homework. Um, I know we all got a lot of things in life going on. You've heard my personal problems the past week. I've been in the hospital and, you know, the kids are falling off the school and just it, just other things happen. But believe in yourself and your education and um, own it and you'll do great. So hope you all have a great week. Um, thanks for listening. I don't know. Maybe you think this video is stupid, but I'll do another one next week if it if we get some good feedback and um, check your announcements on your individual course. So look for announcements on what you need to do for your class this week. I'll post those as soon as I grab some lunch. So thanks. Have a great week and I'll see you guys next week for week three.